Yes. Dear onboard guests from Israel, from the USA, from many other countries, Italy, and so on. Welcome to the first Swiss Israel summit about medical cannabis. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tom Borgera. Is it functioning? Can you hear me? In the name of uh, Laura Herschlag from uh, Kanaka and from Dr. Armin Zucker, I would like to welcome you to this unique event, and we are going to cover today many subjects which are considered quite innovative in the field of medical cannabis. Only a generation ago, such a meeting would be subject to a police intervention. So probably each of you would be already listed in the blacklist of this police of Zurich as potential uh, cannabis dealers. But thanks to the persistence of researchers in universities in Israel and in Switzerland, and to the perseverance of uh, medical doctors, nurses, and pharmacists, and the determination of entrepreneurs and other players in the field of medical cannabis, we have achieved these very important milestones that our governments in Israel and in Switzerland have started to change the mindset about medical cannabis. By changing this mindset, we are helping hundreds of thousands of people in getting treated for diseases that haven't been treated as of today. The therapeutic areas for medical cannabis are constantly evolving. We are standing today at the beginning of a new era. We are, it's, a, it's moving from a bad existence. So imagine five, 10 years ago, you couldn't talk to a openly to a physician about using medical cannabis. Today, you can do, uh, do it. So from a bent uh, existence, we are now in the mainstream <coughs> treatment area. Even so, that uh, we are all understand the importance of the usage of medical cannabis. On the legal side, there's still a long way full of hurdles ahead of us. And there are also many economic particular interests, many of big pharma, to do everything possible to slow down or even to block the permissions and the licenses of the usage of uh, medical cannabis. But the most important is the trade of medical cannabis is, can't be stopped anymore. And as you know, we are all here, very modest people. And uh, just to share with you that uh, four days ago, in honor of this meeting today, the Israeli uh, parliament, the Knesset, decided to allow Israeli companies to export medical cannabis products. So uh, thank you for, for being so many here. I'm exaggerating when I say it's because of us. <laughs> Can Invest, our meeting today, is a, door, is a gate opener. Between Swiss and Israeli companies, between Swiss and Israeli investors, and between Swiss and Israeli researchers. It's just the beginning of a very fruitful and promising cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, let us enjoy today by mingling with each other during the breaks, by meeting many startups, Swiss and Israeli, at, at the end of the day and also during the, the lunch break, and actually by talking to each other and find out what everybody is doing. I would like to use one more sentence to thanks all the volunteers of the Chamber of Commerce, our technicians, the staff of the hotel for enabling us to have this great event today. Thank you very much. Have a very nice and successful meeting today. My name is Almi Tocher from the Chamber of Commerce. We start right away with the regulatory and legal aspect and with this is Margaret Kessler. I have the pleasure to introduce you the mother 
of the legalizing medical cannabis movement in Switzerland. Margaret Kessler launched a motion as member of the Swiss Parliament in 2014 to allow cannabis for the seriously ill. The motion was accepted by the Parliament and the government. Besides, Margaret Kessler has been head of the Swiss Patient Rights Association for over 21 years. She will now talk to us about the cannabis legislation in Switzerland and we will translate it into English. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank, dass ich auch eingeladen wurde, hier ein kurzes Referat zu halten. Als Patientenvertreterin habe ich in der Politik mich natürlich für die Rechte der Patientinnen und Patienten eingesetzt. Und dazu gehört auch der einfache Zugang zu dem, zum medizinischen Cannabis. Es ist wichtig zu wissen, dass ich mich nie für oder gegen eine Legalisierung von Freizeit-Cannabis geäußert habe. Die Verhinderer von medizinischen Cannabis sagen, dass die Zulassung von medizinischen Cannabis sei die Türöffnung zur Legalisierung von Cannabis generell. Das Morphin ist ein wichtiges Schmerzmittel und deshalb wurde das Opium für die Freizeit auch nicht freigegeben. Versuchte ich immer zu klären. Das unterschiedliche Handeln zwischen den Substanzen Cannabis und Morphin kann sehr schwierig, schwer verstanden werden. Es muss einen klaren Unterschied zwischen der Verwendung von Cannabis für medizinische Zwecke und die Freizeit gegeben sein. Nur so werden wir alle Politiker überzeugen können, dass die Legalisierung von Medizin, Cannabis, also von medizinischen Standardisierung, Cannabis notwendig ist. Ich übersetze es schnell. Whilst being a member of Parliament, I represented and fought in favor of patient rights, in particular for the uncomplicated access to medical cannabis. Note that I never took position neither in favor nor against the legitimate legitimization of recreational use of cannabis. The opponents to medical cannabis say that allowing medical cannabis will be the door opener to legalizing cannabis in general. However, morphine is an important painkiller, but opium was not legalized. Treating cannabis and morphine differently makes no sense. I state that the medical use and recreational use of cannabis must strictly be distinguished. This is essential to convince the politicians that legalizing medical cannabis is a must. Derzeit ist der Zugang zu einer lindernden Therapie mit Cannabis in der Schweiz mit einem komplizierten Bewilligungsverfahren für Ärzte und Patienten hoch. Die sogenannte Magistralrezeptur, das Bundesamt für Gesundheit sind in den letzten fünf Jahren 9000 Besuche eingegangen. Grundsätzlich gilt, wenn die Kosten von standardisiertem Cannabis von der Krankenkasse nicht übernommen werden, nützen anwesend, compassionate oder off-label use nichts. Die Konsumentengenehmigung ist de facto wertlos, wenn medizinisches Cannabis preislich von 200 bis 2000 Franken pro Monat von der Krankenkasse nicht übernommen wird. Viele Patienten besorgen sich deshalb verschiedene Cannabisformen aus medizinischen Gründen auf dem Schwarzmarkt. Dies ohne von einer Gesundheitsfachperson begleitet zu werden, die negativen Auswirkungen bekennen wir. Currently, obtaining cannabis therapy in Switzerland is subject to a complicated approval procedure both for doctors and patients, the so-called magistral recipe. Over 9,000 requests for such a special permit were made in the last five years, according to the Federal Office of Health. As the health insurances are not covering in Switzerland the costs of standardized cannabis, unlicensed use, compassionate use, or off-label use are meaningless. The permit is de facto useless as long as the health insurances refuse to cover the costs of 200 up to 2,000 francs treatment costs per month. Therefore, many patients in need obtain various forms of cannabis 
on the black market without medical assistance, the negative effects are known. Die positive Antwort auf meine Interpellation hat mich dazu bewogen, eine Motion einzureichen und diese wurde angenommen und im Ständerat sogar einstimmig. Im Nationalrat wurde die Motion von einigen Rechtsparlamentariern bekämpft. Der 54 Seiten lange Bericht auf meine Motion zeigt auf, wo die Probleme in der Schweiz liegen. Cannabis-Produkte müssen auf die Spe Spezialitätenliste oder auf die Arzneimittel mit Tarif aufgenommen werden. Sonst fehlt die rechtliche Grundlage, dass diese Substanzen von der Krankenkasse bezahlt werden müssen. The positive response to my parliamentary question motivated me to launch a parliamentary initiative. It was approved in the States Council even unanimously. In the National Council, some right-wing member of parliament opposed. The governmental 54 pages report following my parliamentary initiative illustrates that what the, pro what the problems in Switzerland are. Cannabis products must be included in the specialty or the pharmaceutical list with tariffs. Otherwise, the health insurances are missing the legal basis for compensating patients. Zusammenfassend benötigen wir in der Schweiz folgende Veränderung. Erstens, im Betäubungsmittelgesetz die Aufhebung des Verkehrsverbots für den Wirkungstyp Cannabis. Zweitens, in der Verordnung die Überführung in, ins Kontrollsystem mit medizinischem Cannabis wie Morphin gleich behandelt wird. Das muss drittens die Aufhebung des Ausnahmebewilligungssystems für das medizinische Cannabis zur Folge haben. Viertens, wir benötigen eine Begleitforschung, eine gesamtschweizerische Datenerfassung und die Vergütung muss fünftens durch die Krankenkasse übernommen werden. Danke Ihnen für die Aufmerksamkeit. In summary, we need the following changes in Switzerland. The ban of the substance cannabis in the narcotic law must be abolished. Second, cannabis must enter into the control system by regulation, allowing equal treatment of cannabis and morphine. Three, abolishment of the current rule of special permit for medical cannabis. Four, we need accompanying research in a Swiss database. Five, compensation of medical cannabis by the health insurances. Thank you for your attention. Our next speaker will be Daniela Eigenmann. Did you know that emmentologies and medical cannabis are siblings? At least in Switzerland. Because the best known pharmacy in Switzerland allowed to process hemp flowers on gluten to oils and tinctures is located in the picturesque Emmental. And that's where pharmacist Dr. Daniela Eigenmann is working at the Bahnhof Apotheke Langnau in Emmental. Mrs. Eigenmann will now present to you medical cannabis from the pharmacy's perspective. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm looking forward to talking to you about medical cannabis perspective from the pharmacy. As mentioned, I work as pharmacist in Langnau, a village in the middle of Switzerland, and some of you might indeed know the Emmental because of its famous cheese or maybe because of the SL Tigers, a famous ice hockey playing team, or some of you might know Langno because of cannabis. The Bahnhof Apotheke Langno is one of only two pharmacies in Switzerland who has the license to distribute cannabis-based drugs to patients. The pharmacy itself exists since 1990, the cannabis story started 10 years ago in 2008. And this was because of Manfred Funkhauser, the owner of the pharmacy. He wrote his PhD dissertation 
on the medical history of cannabis. And he was thus approached by patients all the time and he was asked whether he could provide them medical cannabis. He always had to say, no, it's not possible, it's forbidden. Until he had the brilliant idea to maybe use synthetic THC, which was not covered by the narcotics law at that time. Long story short, in 2008, he received as the first pharmacist <laughs> the license to produce a synthetic THC solution for a specific patient. And it started with five patients, and in the meantime, several thousands of people have received cannabis-based drugs from the pharmacy. And also, our cannabis division has grown. We are currently six people working in the cannabis section. We exclusively um, do so in this section. We do client service. Um, we answer questions by phone to um, patients, to physicians. We're also active in the lab. Here you can see Manfred Funkhauser in the middle of preparing a THC solution. In collaboration with a farmer and a chemist, we also produce cannabis oil and cannabis tincture. The main active ingredient in cannabis, as you might all know, is the THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, discovered by a famous Israeli scientist, Rafael Meshlam. THC has analgesic, antispasmodic, night stimulating, antiemetic effects, and of course, in higher dosages, it's psychoactive. The majority of our patients use THC based drugs to treat chronic pain. It can be neuropathic pain, pain due to cancer, migraine. Then also numerous patients use it to treat spasticity due to multiple sclerosis, paraplegia, and so on. Other patients use it to treat nausea, emesis, appetite loss, can be due to cancer, or when they under a chemotherapy. And fewer patients use it to treat neurological diseases, movement disorders such as Tourette syndrome, tics, tremor, restless leg syndrome, and even fewer patients use it to treat glaucoma, sleep disturbances, asthma, and so on. So before telling you more about what kind of products are available in Switzerland, I'd like to give you a short overview on the legal situation here. THC, or flowers, containing more than 1% THC, that's uh, prohibited for recreative use. As drug, it's allowed under severe restrictions. But it's important to note that only THC solutions or cannabis extracts can be prescribed. The flowers or the herb cannot be prescribed in contrast to other countries like Israel or Germany. The fiber containing um, less than 1% THC can be used, that's allowed in agriculture. Then CBD, I'm sure you've heard of the second interesting ingredient in cannabis, called cannabidiol has become more and more popular in recent years. Um, CBD flowers containing less than 1% THC are allowed for recreative use, and as drug CBD can be used, again, with restrictions. I'd like to focus now on this part here. So currently, these five products are available for patients in Switzerland. These are products for oral use, that might sound very trivial, but it's not sometimes glaucoma patients. So patients suffering from a high intraocular pressure, they think they have to administer these drops into the eye, which is of course not the way to do. The Sativax, that's the only um, registered um, cannabis extract by Swiss Medic, the Swiss agency for therapeutic drugs. It's a extract that's standardized on THC and CBD. And it's basically available in every pharmacy in Switzerland. Then the cannabis tincture and the cannabis oil, these are both extracts. Um, they are only available in our pharmacy in Langnau. Sativa oil, also an extract, is only available in the other pharmacy in Switzerland that has the license. 
and tronabinol solution. Tronabinol, that's another word for THC. This solution is available in both pharmacies. Each patient, in order to get one of these products, needs a special authorization from the Federal Office of Public Health. And he also needs a prescription for narcotic drugs. So that's the procedure how to get one of these products. The patient needs to find a medical doctor who is willing to prescribe cannabis. This physician requests a special authorization. If the criteria are met, if the indication makes sense, then the FOPH issues such an authorization. And as soon as we in the pharmacy are in possession of this permission and also the special prescription, we are able to deliver the product to the patient. We do that normally per post. Obviously, these patients do not all live in Lanao, but of course also for this step here we need a special permission. The duration from here to here generally takes one to two weeks. But in the future, this whole procedure might change because the Swiss government has decided to facilitate the access to um, cannabis products for patients and we are all excited to see what will happen in the future. So, from our 10 year experience, we can definitely say that cannabis, THC, is a welcome therapeutic option to treat pain, spasticity, nausea, emesis. We've had some spectacular cases like one young disabled lady suffering from cerebral palsy and therefore from spasticity. Their, their parents, they couldn't clothe her with normal sized clothes because um, her arms were twisted like this so they had to buy her clothes <coughs> in an extra, extra large size. She had tried many different other drugs which did not work at all, but from the first day she tried a cannabis tincture. That was a success and finally her parents could buy her normal clothes, normal size, and also she had less pain and her mother told us that she finally could relate to her daughter again, which had been a problem before. Or I could go on like that much longer. One hundred year old lady, for example, is suffering from restless leg syndrome, who had tried many different things. She couldn't sleep because her legs were shaking so much. Finally, when she tried cannabis tincture, she could benefit and could sleep again. So cannabis might be highly helpful, but and this is important to, to notice, it's no miracle cure. Sometimes patients are highly disappointed because they had so much, so, so high expectation. But it's a fact that some people, some patients do not benefit at all. This is sometimes a challenge for us in pharmacy because these patients then ask us, but I had so high hopes and it doesn't work. The good thing of cannabis is certainly it's a favorable safety profile. So relatively few side effects. In therapeutic oral dosages, psychoactive effects sooner normally occur. Um, addiction is not a problem, tolerance no problem. The negative aspect are the high therapeutic costs that at the moment uh, the insurance do not have to pay for. And of course, as you have seen, the administrative hurdles, that might change, however, in the future. And what I have observed as a pharmacist, um, there's a high information need of patients and healthcare professionals. Um, when I'm on the phone with a patient, it's not just for five minutes normally, it's for 20 minutes or longer. It's because they have a lot of questions on cannabis. So one last slide on CBD, cannabidiol. Some people think it's the same substance as THC, it's kind of the legal THC but without the psychoactive side effects. This is not true, however, CBD on its own has different effects. It's anti-epileptic, it's antipsychotic, anxiolytic, anti-inflammatory. It's true it's not psychoactive, uh, um, uh, in fact it counteracts the psychotropic effects of THC. So combination THC-CBD makes absolutely sense. 
but on its own, it's used to treat other diseases as THC that are epilepsy, psychosis, anxiety disorders, inflammation. And the situation concerning CBD in Switzerland is the following. There's no registered drug uh, available yet, but CBD can be can be prescribed as magistral receptor. That means upon prescription, a pharmacist can prepare a CBD preparation in the lab of the pharmacy. We have experience here, and what I can tell you from experience, CBD in rather high dosages though can be helpful to treat severe um, cases of epilepsy in children. A matter of concern for us are the numerous CBD products which are available everywhere on the internet, in CBD shops, etc. They are not marketed as drugs, they are um, sold as chemicals, but of course, because of the CBD hype, they are ingested and taken as drugs. And the problem here is the missing quality control. These products might contain pesticides, heavy metals, fungi, and sure, we don't want severely ill patients to take in contaminated products. I'd like to conclude my presentation with a citation here from an English medical doctor who lived 100 years ago. Administered in therapeutic dosages, the Indian hemp is harmless and deserves to be used more often. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Advocate Adam Dotsetas. The legal and the tax implications into an Israeli company in general and into uh, the medical cannabis Israeli company in particular will now be explored by our next two legal speakers. Um, I don't want to come to stage. I believe it's better that people on the stage so everybody can see us better. Um, you come from the Shibboleth Law Firm in Tel Aviv. You are heading the cannabis practice of Shibboleth. And you will talk about the law, regulations, and opportunities in the cannabis space in Israel. Thank you very much. So I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce, Armin Zucker, Dolba Gira, Adar uh, Les, Laura Herschlag for uh, organizing this event and making it all happen. Um, so I have the cannabis practice at Chibolet & Co. Law Firm, currently the fourth largest firm in Israel, uh, one-stop shop. Um, we have the largest high-tech department in the Israeli market. We represent over 350 startups in Israel. Um, with a strong emphasis on the industries of the future, cybersecurity, uh, autonomous vehicles, blockchain, uh, cryptocurrencies, and obviously life science, and uh, within that, medical cannabis. Uh, we also represent some of the largest uh, um, clients, both domestically and uh, internationally. Uh, okay, so after the introduction, in in. Um, Today I want to talk about some of the uh, legal and regulation uh, background regarding the cannabis uh, industry in Israel. Um, I won't go through all of the slides in, in much detail. I will simply guide through most of the slides and em emphasize the most important issues that I think are relevant for foreign investors uh, that want to be active in the cannabis space in Israel. So as you can imagine, uh, historically, traditionally, cannabis was, uh, is an illegal substance uh, in Israel. Um, over time, and due to various scientific advancements and discoveries, including the isolation of the, uh, uh, the, the, the main cannabinoids within cannabis during the 1960s of the uh, last century, um, and other scientific advancements, cannabis was recognized as having uh, health health benefits and gradually the Israeli government permitted the use of cannabis for medical purposes. Uh, the medical cannabis unit was established within the Ministry of Health in Israel uh, which is responsible on all aspects regarding cannabis including licensing uh, for the patients and for the, the uh, companies that are active in the industry. 
So in 2016, the Israeli government introduced the uh, medicalization reform, which essentially uh, transformed the industry. Today, in 2019, we are still in transition between the old regime and the new regime. I'll, I'll, touch, I'll touch that in a few moments. And just recently, as mentioned, in uh, the Israeli government approved the export of cannabis. Currently, there are about uh, 35,000 registered patients in Israel that use cannabis. Uh, the legal framework consists of the following, the following, uh, uh, the single convention on narcotic drugs, the protocol amending the, the convention, the, uh, um, the dangerous drug ordinance in Israel. <coughs> so since the 1960s of the last century and the scientific discoveries, Cannabis was gradually uh, recognized as having medical uh, medical advantages. The government uh, uh, the government passed various resolutions that enabled patients to use cannabis for for medical purposes. And the uh, market model, which is a seed to sale market model, was established by the Israeli government. What do I mean by a seed to sale market model? It's a closed market. That means only eight licensed producers. Uh, have a permit or license to, to grow cannabis and sell cannabis to patients. As part of their license, they are able to, they are the only ones that can, that can uh, do the entire, or all of the activities in the chain of value. That means germination, seedling, up until uh, the supply of cannabis to the patients, including training and waste disposal. So the medicalization reform changed that completely. Um, how did it change that? First of all, in terms of the mindset. The mindset is now a mindset of, uh, is a medical mindset, uh, and it uh, attempts to uh, it attempts to uh, supply cannabis in a at a medical grade to the patients. Uh, it presented clinical practice methodology and various indications for which cannabis can be prescribed. Uh, training of physicians and pharmacists. Uh, uh, standardization of medical cannabis and uh, uh, transition from a licensed regime to a prescription regime. So up until the reform, the patients would have to apply to the to the Ministry of Health, to the medical cannabis unit, and request a license to use cannabis. Now they can just go to their physician. The physician prescribes cannabis. They go to the pharmacy and get their cannabis. <coughs> So currently, the Ministry of Health is working on implementation of the, the new reform, the 2016 medicalization reform. Um, we are still in transition mode. The old regime is expected to, to terminate by uh, March 31st, 2019. As of that date, any one of the eight licensed producers that will not adhere to the new regulation will essentially lose its license. What? What additional uh, thing did the, the medicalization reform introduce? Essentially, it broke the, the seed to sale model that we saw previously, and currently the, the, uh, the entire chain of value was broken up to into individual units. Each unit is responsible uh, and is permitted to do only particular, particular uh, actions within the, the, the cannabis space. So you have cultivation farm, which can cultivate cannabis, grow small plants, transfer cuttings, all the small plants to the growth facility. The growth farm can then grow the cannabis to the vegetation and flowering stages, harvest the cannabis, use the raw material, but only to can transfer the raw material to a production facility or processor. The processor can then uh, um, process the cannabis into uh, dried buds, packaged buds, or pre-rolled cigarettes, extracts, and transfer that to the distribution companies or pharmacies. The patient eventually goes to the pharmacy and with his prescription and receives the cannabis. Each and every one of the units is required to adhere to uh, specific standards uh, regarding growing the cannabis, distributing the cannabis, uh, uh, securing the facility in order to, uh, to uh, prevent leakage, theft, so on and so forth. Um, these are very detailed standards. It's part of the Israeli medical cannabis, good cannabis practice that was uh, uh, written in Israel. The, uh, the type of products that can be sold to the patients are uh, either inflorescences, buds, dried and packaged, pre-rolled cigarettes, cannabis extracts, 
and possibly in the future additional products will be approved. Um, an, additional, uh, an additional part of the medicalization reform is a very lenient approach towards research and development. Research and development can be conducted in any one of these verticals, agricultural and biochemical R&D for instance, to improve the consistency of the crops to uh, increase the resistance of the crops to, uh, uh, to uh, 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 fungi or, or molds or other uh, microbiology, technological R&D or pharmacological R&D to develop uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, technological R&D to develop uh, other types of technology that don't necessarily pertain to the, uh, uh, the cannabis or pharmaceuticals, but for, for instance, the post-harvest and curing stages, let's say drying, drying uh, technologies, other types of technologies. So clinical trials, uh, there are approximately 200 clinical trials on various indications, uh, uh, many more on the way that are conducted in, in Israeli uh, um, medical institutions. As mentioned, the Israeli government approved export of cannabis. Uh, the government expects approximately $1 billion of annual revenues from cannabis. Uh, in December 20, uh, 25, 2018, the dangerous drug ordinance was amended in order to enable the export of cannabis from Israel abroad. And that was subject to a government approval. Just this past Sunday, the government, the Israeli government, approved export of cannabis. And the, the uh, players in the cannabis industry in Israel are expected to start with the export activities somewhere between mid 2019 and mid 2020. <coughs> Um, there will be some limitations. Uh, the export will be subject to a license from the Ministry of Health, obviously. Um, Israel, Israeli companies will be able to export cannabis to countries that specifically approve the importation of cannabis from Israel. And the export would be only for end products, that is, the products that we, we saw previously. And not any, and essentially, Israeli companies would not be able to export any part of the plant from which cannabis can be grown. Uh, in, in the destination country. So in terms of corporate structure and, and how, the, how the market can look like. Although we, we said that each and every one of the units must be individual corporate entity, the ownership can be, can be uh, all, of the, all of the units can be under the same ownership. So in terms of corporate structure, you can uh, incorporate a holding company. The holding company can incorporate subsidiaries for the entire new chain of value. That is one entity for cultivation farm. Although cultivation and growth farm can be coupled together, but for the sake of example, one subsidiary for each one of the units uh, in the new chain of value and you transfer the cuttings to the growth facility, the raw material to the production facility, you can have your products or extracts uh, and, and then uh, commercialize those. So what, what are the, the, there is a growing interest in the new chain of value in Israel. We can see that both domestically and foreign investors coming into Israel. The reasons are, 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 are diverse, cannabis, Currently, internationally, is the flavor of the month. Uh, everyone wants part of the game. It's the green rush. Everyone wants to be uh, to jump on the wagon. The industry market cap is, ex is expected to increase dramatically over a very short period of time. Um, you have the ability to create substantial IP. In Israel, there has been IP that's created, which is anecdotal data. We have eight licensed producers that have been uh, um, supplying cannabis to 35,000 patients now for years, and they have received in, uh, feedback from the patients, and they, uh, uh, they have a pretty good idea of what their strains uh, uh, can affect. Currently, we are uh, in the process of creating more scientific data as part of clinical trials conducted. Uh, there is product development uh, in various fields. It can be in cosmetics, nutraceuticals, uh, and pharmaceuticals. Some Israeli scientists now claim that it may be a silver bullet for certain conditions. We'll wait and see how that turns out. Specifically in Israel, you have a local cannabis industry that is heavily based on the legacy of innovation and progress, both in the medical field and in the agricultural field, which are both very developed fields in Israel. 
uh, in light of that, you have a, a deep involvement of the entire high-tech industry in Israel and the uh, medical institutions who are really on board and, uh, uh, and are part of the whole revolution. In Israel, you have wide government support, comfortable regulatory environment, in particular regarding R&D activities, uh, which a license for R&D activities is very easy to, to, uh, to obtain. Export of products has been approved. The, if you don't export products and you have a product that is, is not approved for export, you can commercialize the IP. There are no, uh, there are no, uh, um, no uh, kind of issues that prevent you from exporting IP. Uh, favorable climate for cultivation, proximity to the European market, which decreases the the the, uh, the cost for export, and foreign ownership over Israeli cannabis company is permitted. Um, recent transaction is in the Israeli market. I won't go through through all of the transactions, but suffice to say that there are various transactions. Some of them reverse mergers into into publicly traded companies, investments. Uh, equity financing, uh, export deals with foreign companies. Uh, so you can see here, for instance, it's signed an export deal for $110 million. <coughs> Things are really happening quickly in Israel. Um, total <coughs> companies raised $76 million. Uh, our firm, just recently, it was published, just recently uh, uh, handled the transaction, uh, reverse merger of one of the eight LPs into a publicly traded company. The, the exit strategy is generally going public, either in Canada, Israel, Australia, otherwise 17 Israeli companies are publicly traded now uh, and with a market cap of over $2 billion. Uh, um, government funding for research and development is available. Uh, that is part of the, uh, of the revolution that cannabis is considered uh, an independent industry. Thank you very much. Uh, if anyone wants the presentation, we can just exchange uh, contact details or you can send me an email and I'll make sure to send you the, uh, the presentation. Next speaker is Imo Feibisch, an Israeli lawyer and tax expert living and working for the Israeli law firm Luxembourg, Abramovich and Schneller in Zurich. She's also a member of our board, the Chamber of Commerce. Why don't you come up so we can see more? Good morning, everyone. Very, very happy to see you here. I'm taking the worst role today because I'm looking into the serious part of medical cannabis, not the fun part of medical cannabis. So as Armin already introduced me, I don't need to say much about myself, it's just that I'm sitting a little bit on the border between Israel and Switzerland for 12 years now, which I love and hate in the same time, always, and I very much bless every, every possible cooperation between Switzerland and Israel. Coming into the space of medical cannabis is a fantastic opportunity to enjoy the benefits of both countries, which are so incredibly different from each other. I've been working with wealth, with families, and with financial institutions all over the world for over and above 15 years now. So what I'm going to do is be the bad cop here and to tell you what do you need to look at when you are dealing with investors and entrepreneurs from all different kinds of generations and backgrounds if they want to invest into Israel, and also a little bit if they want to go out of the country and market themselves and seek for some support outside. So here are my fifth commandments, or a little bit of what do you need to look at when you're investing in Israel. Um, in fact, those guidelines are relevant for any sort of in investment that one thinks about doing in the country. Some is very obvious, some is not. So as I said, I'll take the, the role of the bad cop and tell you a little bit about it. So first about due diligence. Please, don't just invest because someone is a family member is very, very, very nice to you, very, very interesting and charming. Do your homework. Now, in Israel, doing homework is very, very easy on one side, a little bit less in the, easy on the other side. I had a discussion with Armin about it yesterday or the day before, and he asked me, is there any Steuerhaus uh, in Israel? The answer is no. Is there any legal possibility to obtain information about the debt of a company? The answer is no. Is there a possibility to get information about the legal good standing of the company? The answer is yes. So do your homework, do your research, 
Use every single possible tools that you have in order to get information. Get advice, please. Get advice goes also on to the fourth guideline that I say. Please remain compliant at home. Check that you're fine. Check that you reported everything. Check that the government knows where you are and where you're investing. Because if you don't do it, they will know it anyway in today's world. Preferred structures in Israel. There are so, so, so many possible ways to invest in Israel. You can provide a loan. You can go into private equity. You can go into crowdfunding and invest in smaller uh, batches. You can join a publicly listed company. You can join privately owned companies. Every single one of them has different effects on your wealth, on your tax consequences, and also on the timeline in which one wants to invest in the in the product or invest in the industry. So please also think very well what point, not only from the financial side, but also in the emotional side. I'm a very big believer that you could invest and enjoy your investment. Um, sure. <laughs> um, only if you're really connected to it. Find a stage in all this space that you feel connected to. Go there, be there, take part, take active part. Don't just sit there and wait for uh, distributions to come. Be compliant on the tax side in Israel. Again, I'm a tax expert, I'm an Israeli tax expert. That's my role to tell you all about it. Switzerland is blessed not to have capital gains. Israel has blessed its foreign investors not it, and exempted it from capital gains in Israel when you are selling Israeli shares. However, we have interest, we have dividends, and we have all sorts of other components that are taxable in Israel and reported, especially if the investor is a financial institution, and especially if you're going into family structures, trust structures, foundations, and so on. Please look in all of it, and please, when you, receive, when you start uh, speaking about getting the money and enjoying what you've been investing until now, don't forget there is also a little bit of a headache procedure, and this is the headache, uh, on uh, the compliance side, the anti-money laundering regulation in Israel is at the moment very, very, very strict before get, get, taking money out of the country, before bringing money into the country. And last and certainly not least, when you want to take money, you will have a withholding tax issue that you will have to deal with too. Anyhow, still, it is fun to invest in Israel. I heartily encourage it. And all the hurdle is not too bad. Just do what you believe in and enjoy the benefit of it. Thanks. Speakers to the stage, please, for the panel. And yes, we have the time. It's Martin Kessler. Yes, please. And we have Iman and Inbal. And we also invite to the panel Martin Ritter, the representative of the Federal Agency of Health from Bern. question was asked by a banker whether now with Israel allowed to export cannabis whether Israeli producers could now send medical cannabis to Swiss patients directly Dr. Ritter what do you think about such a scenario thank you very much for offering me the possibility to answer to your questions, if they remain simple. <laughs> Otherwise, I give you my card. Um, we had a very nice slide from the presentation regarding the medical use in Switzerland that showed that there are obligatory steps actually through the authorization from the doctor prescribing the medicine and the pharmacist delivering the medicine to the patient. So at the moment, this scenario of direct delivery uh, from Israel to a patient would not be possible. But if the Israeli company finds some doctors in Switzerland interested in prescribing this medicine and a pharmacist interested in selling, this medicine, then um, we are waiting or we are expecting some uh, gesuche or uh, demands 
um, to allow that. The Federal Office of Public Health can give exemption authorization, but we do not must. So uh, this is just <laughs> a difference to tell you that every situation will be uh, examined uh, with its detail and differences and so on. So it's not an automatical, just because you send uh, demand for exemption authorization that uh, people are going to get it. But I'm happy to see that uh, new, maybe new things will happen. Thank you very much. Who wants to be the icebreaker for the next question? Can you introduce yourself? Hi, Simon Belinda. Uh, it's a question for Dr. Daniela. I was surprised by the process, the short process needed from the time where the patients go to a medical doctor to receive his drug by the end of the chain. One week, two weeks. Can you tell me how you are doing this? Because in Israel we have a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> So you have to say thank you to the Federal Office of Public Health, who do a good job. So if it's really urgent, it can be even below one week. We've seen in one or two days uh, one of these um, uh, permissions. Um, and of course, we provide to medical doctors kind of a, um, um, a document they can fill out so that it that e eases up or facilitates the process. But Yes, I think it's a uh, thank you to the FOPH. Thank you for the compliment, always nice. <laughs> um, in fact, uh, you, you saw the whole chain and each of those steps actually uh, you can, uh, will take some time. And sometimes patients look for quite a while to find a doctor that is ready to ask us. Once it's in our office and we are there and not attending some kind of conference, um, we do it on the same day, yes. But um, everything is treated by post, so you have 24 hours from the doctor's office to our office. We receive it, we treat it and back another day. So at least two to three days. Questions at the back? Professor Alon, Ellie Alon and doctor prescribing uh, cannabis in Switzerland. And uh, I have only a small comment to your beautiful lecture to Dr. Eigemann. Uh, in this chain that you said, the first uh, point you said it's uh, the patient who is looking for a doctor who is willing to give him the prescription for cannabis. But uh, my comment is that there are doctors also like myself that after making the diagnosis, they convince the patient that there is also another way to treat his pain or other problems, and it's the cannabis. So it's not always the first uh, point in, cha in the chain the patient sometimes is also a doctor, and I hope that after this conference and in the future, there'll be much more uh, doctors that will uh, be the first part of the chain. Thank you. Any one of the panelists who would like to comment on this? That's a more sort of statement. Um, more questions from the audience? If not, then I have the pleasure to announce that we will start after the coffee break with the medicalization of cannabis with other top speakers from Switzerland and Israel. So now you are invited to join us on the first floor for the coffee break. We'll start at 11.30 sharp here. So please be here on time. And thank you very much for being here with us.